Okay, so in the previous module or lesson, I was talking a little bit about having your own newsletter. This one's going to go a little bit more in depth. I told you why you need it, so I'm going to tell you, I'm going to lead you to where you can get a newsletter. And I personally use Substack. I know Substack is more of a social media-esque uh, like, uh, mix between a social media and a newsletter uh, service, but I like using Substack mostly because it is a way for me to gather emails without paying an arm and a leg for it. Because there are other services. I used MailChimp before, and they're pretty cool, but they have like something similar to like around your first 50 to 100 emails that you gather being free, but after that, you got to pay more. And I'm like, e no, I'm not doing that. I'm I'm broke. <laughs> I'm I'm just starting off, and if I don't know what I'm doing, uh, it doesn't make sense for me to spend an arm and a leg to, you know, just gather people's emails. I just want to make. I just want to make a career out of it. It's once I make another enough money, sure. And if Substack dies, then if Substack dies, like a lot of social media. They, that was a lot of social media. It just, it's just a way of the internet. It, you don't, it, as long as you have their, e as long as you have people's emails, it really doesn't matter whether a social media dies. And that's one cool thing that Substack provides. It's a free social media platform service where you can have people's emails for free and they have other, they have plenty of benefits that you can do with your newsletter you can host your podcast there you can do blogs of course you can do blogs and it's all sent directly to people's emails and it's great it's fantastic it's i recommend it mostly because it's free it's a great starting off point i told you why harvesting emails is important and how do you keep people engaged with your newsletter how i do it for right now I do my segmented method of making 20 to 40 panels or six to eight, six to 10 pages. And I post it on there. I post it on my newsletter. And one key thing that I've kept hearing about managing newsletters is that if your newsletter, every time you send a newsletter, It'll, it'll get a percentage of, you'll see a percentage of people opening it or an average percentage of how many people open it. And if you get around 15, that's a one five, one, one five percent or a 30%. If you're around 15 or 30%, you're good. Anything below 15%, you are just going into people spam. But Hey, the one cool thing about percentages is the higher of the amount of emails that you get, that 15 or that 30% or 25, I believe, I believe it's, it's something manageable, but that 15% at the very least, at the very, very least, it grows as soon as that pool of email grows. So one thing that I noticed that people are messing up when it comes to wanting people to look at their comics or whatever they have, they send it directly to whatever content hosting site uh, that they mainly use. And that's a no-no. That's a very big no-no because when I'll just say, I just want to use Webtoons. I'm going to pick on them a lot because I have a lot of beef with them. Because when I see people, they say, look at, they go on Facebook or Reddit, which we're going to talk about, by the way. Um, they say, hey, Here's a here's a little clip. Here's a here's a single page of my comic. Here, look at look at the rest of it on Facebook or look at well, not Facebook, but look at the rest of it on webtoons or tapas or yada yada yada. And that is nice. That is cool where I guess the majority of people know those like webcomic hosting services. I'm like this can be like for literally anything, but I'm just using those uh like when I say anything, I mean like art or writing or you get it. You get it. Um but 
this could literally go for anything, but when you give them the A to B, the only people that benefited from that transaction is everybody but you, the guy that created the content, because the platform where you, where you initially promoted your webcomic, they get the benefit because you gave them content, and now when other people are looking for more content, they go to let's say Webtoons or the webcomic hosting pl con uh, platform where you also posted more of that content. So the viewer migrates from one pla from platform A to platform B. And the, and the weird thing is mostly the viewer, they don't want to go from platform to platform. The, the each, every platform doesn't want anybody to go from platform to platform they want everybody to stay on the same platform so that's why i say if you want somebody to go from one platform to another you gotta be that middleman that every <laughs> you gotta be that middleman and say hey if you want to know where this you want to find out a little bit more about this go on you either do two things right go to my newsletter so so go to my newsletter so I can show you where to go to the other platform. And if they say, no, I don't want to give you your email, then that's just it. That's it. They're, they're not going to be, they're not going to be people who are going to be interested in you to begin with. So they might as well not have interacted you in the begin with to at all. Right. But if there is a way for you to post your entire comic, if that's if that's what you're into, if your entire comic on platform A natively, then say, hey, you can go on this part of the website of this platform if you want to read my comic. That way, the platform is happy that everybody stays on that platform natively, and the viewer is happy that they don't have to go anybody anywhere outside of the platform to see a comic to see more content and you would probably be a little bit happier if you have them move over to your newsletter so you can have their email so you can pr uh, promote more report promote your paid stuff or whatever you want uh to them and let them know about it and you'll have more money in your pocket. But hey, that that's like either A or either B. So how do you grow your newsletter? The way that you grow your newsletter is everywhere you post, you got to show and tell people about your newsletter. That's the best way to post. That's the best way to grow. But I know you're what you're thinking. Didn't you say posting is just, is not marketing? That is true. That is true. You also got to post where it's treated best. Posting on one posting on one platform that doesn't that doesn't natively care about you, that doesn't natively care about the content that you're posting is different from posting on another platform that will get you further. I guess yeah, I would say with an example of planting a seeds and in fertile soil versus planting seeds on fertile soil. You know what I'm saying? Like you have to go where you're where you're treated best. So when you know where you're treated best, you can thrive better and faster, stronger and wait, better. I'm trying to I'm trying to make a Daft Punk reference, I'm sorry. But anyway, that's how you grow. You got to try different soils to plant your seed in different soils. So when when one when one patch of grant when one patch of dirt soil is natively bringing you up, that's when that's where you know where to invest, where to go push your news push your newsletter and if you're giving all of your all of your content out for free, that is prime real estate of saying, hey, if you want to know, if you want to get updated or you want to know, if you want to find out better ways to support me, go over to my newsletter where you can get 
bonus stuff or find out or you get bonus stuff or find uh i yeah basically bonus stuff easy that's just a way to do it so that is my take on newsletters substack is great it's free it's easy to use and just get those emails 